Well hello there guys, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be going over the build system in Fallout 76 because it's changed massively. And what you have to understand here is that Fallout 76 is a multiplayer game. And with that in mind you can no longer become a master of all trades. Instead the system has been changed so that you can only master a small collection of perks. And to be honest, I can actually imagine this being really fun. The reasoning for this is that Bethesda wants players to work together. So I may, for example, specialise in combat, but another player may be more interested in crafting or trading, and therefore focus on that. That's not to say they'll be completely useless in combat, but you can't master the highest level of everything at later level. The way this system works is using perk cards. We still have the special system with strength, perception, endurance and so on, but now when we invest points into our special stats, we'll be able to select a new perk card. These perk cards will have different effects, but first, let's look at each special stat and see what it does exactly. Because they've actually changed massively from previous Fallout games, and you may want to consider what is good and what is not. So firstly we have perception. This increases your awareness of nearby enemies and your ability to detect stealthy movement as well as your weapon's accuracy in VATS. In my opinion, perception now seems to be one of the less useful stats, or for me at least. It's very useful for player versus environment because you can see where the enemies are, but as for player versus player, we're not yet sure how stealth will work, but if you can see an enemy, it won't matter if they're stealth or not or how good your perception is, you can still see them and shoot them, enemy or player. As for the VATS accuracy boost though, well VATS works in real time now, so you can actually aim at opponent's body parts in real time and just fire off a few shots at them. But if you're a skilled first person shooter, you won't need that at all, you can just aim and fire the shots at their body part. So in my opinion, that seems to be a big nerf to VATS. Charisma, on the other hand, is your ability to lead and help others. It allows you to share higher perk cards and also affects your rewards from group missions and prices when you barter. This is a really interesting one because it suggests that in a party of four, we can actually share our perk cards to help each other as well. Though I don't actually know what use bartering is going to be when there are no other NPCs in the game, just other players to trade with. Unless the game has a fixed price for every single item that can be reduced with charisma. But let's say I have a charisma skill of 5 and I'm selling weapons for more than they're worth. Surely you're just going to go to someone else with cheaper prices. I'm not so sure how that's going to work exactly. Intelligence though will affect your ability to hack terminals and also the condition and durability of items that you craft and the return you get from scrapping items. So having a high intelligence skill is great for crafters who want to share durable weapons amongst their team. I'm also sure that it will affect some of the weapons and stuff you can build in the settlement system will rely on your intelligence level like it did on Fallout 4. Interestingly though, it no longer affects experience gain. Those are the only stats we got to see though and I imagine strength will affect your carry weight and your melee damage and endurance, your health and stamina as per usual. Each one of these stats have a collection of perk cards attached to them and I'm sure that Bethesda will add more in the coming years to this game. But for example, if I have a high level charisma stat, I can use higher level charisma perk cards. We can see here that there's one called Inspirational which gives you and your team an additional 5% experience boost. And next to that one we have the Lone Wanderer, which makes you take 10% less damage and also gain 10% AP regeneration. Then we see the Vampire Perk card, which makes blood packs now satisfy thirst and no longer irradiate and also heal 50% more health. There are tons of perk cards in the game. We can see at the bottom there it says choose 48 cards. I can only assume you get one per level. And you can completely swap out these perk cards to customize your character whenever you like. You can respec your whole build and create and just change the way you play your character from one day to the next. 
In a sense, we can make the ultimate party of friends to adventure with. I assume, for example, if you all had the inspiration card, it would stack for a 20% experience boost because you can have a party of four. Next though, we have the intelligence perk cards. Firstly, we have first aid, which lets you heal 10% more lost health. Then next we have the hacker card that gives you plus one hacking skill. And finally, the makeshift warrior perk that makes melee weapons 30% less likely to break and cheaper to repair. Then you take a closer look at these cards and you see they can actually be upgraded. The hacker one makes it so you can reduce the lockout time if you fail at lockpicking. And concentrated fire increases your accuracy and damage with each perk point when targeting the same body part in VATS. I actually love this system guys because it means I can change from a combat orientated character to one week later being a crafter who concentrates on breaking down items and making settlements. I also think it will lead to a massive variety in different builds within the game world. Players can choose how they want to play the game which is really important in an RPG. I imagine it being fun with friends as well, like Mate as she hacks the terminal to get into a secret facility while we're all defending her from a horde of super mutants or other players who want to get the same loot. Maybe we can even take other players hostage, like I hope there's an in-game voice system so I can bargain with a player's life and get them to hack a terminal that I don't have the skill to hack or even pay them caps to unlock it. It also sounds like the skill system could also be back from Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, though I don't know in what shape or form. We'll have to wait and see. But the customization does not stop there, guys. The game is also going to have mutations, which sounds amazing. This was actually explained in an interview done by Noclip at Bethesda Studio. So let me just put this clip inside here to explain it. We have something called mutations. So Fallout 4, you had the, we had that um, inverse meter for your health and your rads. The more rads you had, the less your health was, and you're able to cure that. So in this game, the more rad you have, the more chances you get mutated. And they have all sorts of neat, like they're, um, they're almost like traits from Fallout 1 and 2 where they have a plus and a minus. You can cure them if you don't like them, or there's ways in the, to permanently get them if there's ones you really like, way late game stuff. But yeah, you'll get r these mutations. And, and, and they're, they're mostly gameplay. They're not, some of them are visual, but they're mostly gameplay side stuff that like tweak your character a little. That sounds awesome. So now when you get irradiated, you actually get random mutations. And some of these mutations could actually be beneficial to your character build. For example, if I want to play a strength-based character that uses melee weapons, I guarantee there's going to be something that gives me more strength but less intelligence. And if I'm making a very focused, specialized build, then it could even help out my character in that sense and make him even stronger and I might not need any intelligence at all. And I really do pray that some of these mutations are visual as well, so you get more muscly, or maybe even there could be a really cool one where you get so far irradiated that radiation actually heals you, like in Fallout 4, they had a perk that did that, but also you kind of like glow a little bit green, and if any other players stand too close to you, they actually get radiation damage, some, some crazy stuff like that, and it just sounds really fun and very fallouty. I would love something like that. And guys, don't forget that I am giving away a Nintendo Switch. If you still want to enter, you can check out the link at the top of the description just down below. It's only going to be about 16 days until I announce the winner of the competition. And I'm also giving away a few copies of Fallout 76 on my Discord server as well, so make sure you enter that too. I understand that you can play the game solo online, but it sounds like you will need help along the way. I am sure that you can be a jack of all trades and a master of none. That said, Pete Hines did tell us that he plays the game solo and really enjoys it. But if you want to know more about the PvP system, which may help some of your worries, and also how the microtransactions work in Fallout 76, check out my other videos. I'll link them down below in the related videos section in the description. And that will give you a better idea of how the gameplay mechanics are going to work in Fallout 76. But um, thanks for watching, guys. Please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm literally making two videos a day on Fallout 76 at the moment, covering absolutely everything we know about the game. If you do subscribe, though, make sure you press that bell icon as well, because then YouTube will notify you as soon as I release a new video for you guys to watch. But uh, thanks for your support on the recent videos, guys. I will see you in the next one. My name is ESO. See you later.